Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like a clock, and I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom in congruence with Steel Flyers, www.com Steel Flyers. This is Steel himself right here on the uh, whatever side it is on you are that just said peace. That's him. You should know that already, actually. Everybody in the land knows it. And there's uh, Professor Joe, Professor Joe Bork, who is in affiliation with, in fact, has a, it's not really affiliation, has a YouTube channel called Sports Fanatic News with the PH Fanatic News. And uh, everybody in the land is watching that, so you should probably get over there too. Hit the subscribe button and all that. We're also affiliated with a lot of other things, but we'll get that into that after. We are doing a series, aren't we, friends, on yeah. uh, the uh, NHL, every NHL team in a, I, I call it the Perlo alphabetical order, which is basically somewhat alphabetical, depending on what I feel like doing that day. Because that's what we do here when we feel like at a clock industries, we do that. And today we are looking at the almost Stanley Cup champions, the okay, Dallas almost. Stars. And part of the reason why we're doing that is because our friend Steele here almost predicted the Dallas Stars. Just about. <laughs> but he did Just predict the Dallas Stars off. to make the finals. Yeah. So, yeah, that was pretty awesome. And we figured, ah, actually, that's just part of the reason. He steals always hanging about, and uh, we love him, and he's he's awesome at what he does. So that's why we bring him on. And then Joe, Joe too, which he's called a professor for for a reason. So let's get into. We've did uh, Detroit, or no, we haven't did. Yeah, I did Detroit by myself. We just did one with John from uh, Off the Wall Hockey. Uh, that was Buffalo, right? We did Buffalo. Buffalo yeah. So you can check that out too. It's well. I'll put it in the comment section. It's pretty cool. Uh, but we're going to talk about Dallas now. Uh, they made a lot of moves here, really, in the off season, but somehow still made things very interesting at the same time, partially because of not doing said moves. I would think. Uh, what do you think, Steel, about Dallas's off season and their approach to how they did everything here um, after almost making the Stanley Cup? Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me on, man. It's always a pleasure being with the pros and the nos, and and you guys are definitely it. Uh, very blessed and honored to be here with uh, with Professor Joe and with uh, Pearl of Wisdom. You guys are the are the cat's meow, that's for sure. So thank you very much for having me. Uh, let me say this about Dallas. Um, yeah, I did pick them. They were my sleeper team. Um, I thought that they would have had a better offensive showing um, based off of their offense that they have and based off of the team that they put out on the ice. Um, I'm, I was quite a little bit when I started looking at them a little bit more in depth and starting to see that, man, they, they got pretty much most everybody wrapped up for this year as far as contract wise. And so they didn't really have to do much. They, they had to re-sign Hudobin, uh, which they did. Okay. And, He's very happy with his contract. He's very grateful to be back in Dallas. And I think he played the best out of both the goalies that were there. You know what I mean? And I think he gives them the best chance to win moving forward based off of the type of team that they're, they put out on the ice. Okay. So I, I, they, they, did, uh, they did go out and, and – uh, <clears throat> excuse me. They did go out and get Dennis, right? Uh, Gar Garanoff. Well, he came in as a he rookie. He came in as a rookie, right? So they did. They did give him a a, a, a nice contract uh, yeah. for a rookie to oh, come in there. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, average average uh, salary is two point two five mil for the next two years. So um, that that's a good good salary for him. He had an up and down year this year. Um, he played down in the AHL for a little while and then came in and lit it up in the playoffs. So I mean, you know. He, <clears throat> Okay. Um, they also are looking to sign uh, the the Rupe Hints, right? I just because I know how much Professor Joe wants to say that name again, you know. <laughs> but yeah. if they sign him, right? If they sign Rupe, and if they sign um, Corey Perry, then they're not going to have uh, too much money cap wise. No. So they're going to be that's that's pretty much going to be it. They're going to be tapped out after that. 
Mm-hmm. You would have enough so, money for like one of the veteran older defensemen that you could get just to have a good veteran that you like in the house with your defense score. That's about all you would have money for at that point. Probably. Yeah, I mean, as or long as he was like under a million dollars or something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, or an older or just bottom six forward. Yeah, one of those two positions. But I would say Dallas would want a bottom four defenseman more than they want a bottom six forward. They have mm-hmm. enough depth at forward. Exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so there you go. I, 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 the fact that they didn't do any moves um, just goes to show you that the fact that they're bringing back most of the same team that they put out there this past year that, um, you know, was one not far from hoisting the cup. You know, let's face it, they got completely outmatched by uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning for the Stanley Cup. But they had a very successful season. They outplayed their opponents um, when they needed to. Um, and let's face it, the West was pretty uh, competitive this year. So I, I even would think Dallas wouldn't even be a sleeper team next year. I think you would actually have to put them right there in contention uh, to come back for next year just because they didn't do hardly anything and they did bring back and keep almost all of their same players, and then they re-signed Hudobin and they gave their rookie contract to, uh, uh, you know what I mean, and then they're, hopefully they'll sign Hints and bring back Perry. Yeah. Hi, yeah. Joe. So um, we, on the other hand, did not uh, see Dallas making it as far as that was the case, and a lot of that had to do with the fact that their offense just wasn't humming in the, in the regular season. But uh, what, in uh, your mind, how do you like this idea of not really changing things up all that much, uh, especially bringing Hudobin back, who is actually fairly expensive at for a backup, mm-hmm. but not for his avail- ability. But, you know, we see a lot of backups being signed up there for a lot less than Hudobin. And he got a three-year contract, which... Is seems like a uh, which is quite a bit in this environment. Do you know, would you would you say? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, it is. But I think when you watch Hadoven, he loves Dallas so much, and Dallas integra- like gravitated to him so much. Is probably the better word to use. Where like that's just a perfect fit. Where he also plays. He has a good relationship with their defense already. He was in sync with them as soon as he got in. So. If there is still issues with Bishop in terms of health, you have confidence having someone like Hudobin come in rather than... Now, Ottinger I have confidence in, but I'm talking about it rather than bringing in a whole new goaltender that has to learn your system and learn your defensive quirks of each defenseman and all that. Uh, It's better to just have the guy that worked very well. And he took a very funny contract, too, like you said before the podcast. Three, 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 three. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But the... I could actually hear who Dobin going... I will sign with you, but it must be three, 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 three. All the way across, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not doing it. I can hear yeah, it. right? <laughs> <laughs> but, he, did video. he did a great interview, like, right after he signed on. I watched on yeah. uh, NHL Network. That was really cool that he was able to come out there and explain why he came back to Dallas and exactly with what you said. Joe, right there. And, you know, you even pointed that out, too, in all of our videos that we did throughout the uh, the playoffs and the round robins, that he played much better uh, with the defense in Dallas than what Bishop did. Mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> and when Bishop, that was in the playoffs. Bishop obviously outplayed uh, for part of the regular season, why Dallas got to where they did Hudobin, and Hudobin right. was the best statistical backup, one of the best statistical back. That's the other thing. When you're coming off of a year where you were already one of the best statistical backups, and then you went off in the postseason, that's going to help your contract. So I think he got an extra year. They were probably looking at two years, maybe. And then because of what he did, it moved it an extra year. But Gorianov, who still brought up, he's right. He got hot as a firecracker, fell off a bit, but he still became their leading scorer because Dallas had no, no scoring in the regular season. At 20 goals, as yeah. a, a rookie, was their leading scorer. So that's uh, 
that's the only concern I have. Um, but the but the reason that could mitigate the concern is they started scoring more at times in the postseason, which is after Rick Bonus took over, had his camp, then they had the postseason. So Bonus's system is going to suit the stars best. It was starting to show some signs of that, but not fully because of what we said. They got far, but they got far from being opportunist at times, not being the better team on the ice, where the next step would be be the better team on the ice. Be the team that's coming towards the other team, gauntlet, like go right at their gauntlet rather than having the other team yeah. that's going right at your gauntlet. That's kind of that's what you need. That's the only thing that needs to adjust for them. Because if you look at their team, it's not like they don't have people that can't score. I mean, Joe Pavelski turned into the second coming of his, like, 25-year-old self in the postseason. So if he can figure out how to do a fraction of that in the regular season, that would work. Jamie Benn is only 31 and realistically should still be better, playing much better than he did in the regular season. He finally got going uh, in the uh, conference finals. Um of the playoffs big time there. And then Radulov's fine. Radulov yeah. does what he does. I mean, he's yeah. usually been pretty fine. And then Sagan, we found out, was really injured. Um, so we'll see what uh, he can come back from. But they just need these guys to keep developing, especially guys like Kivi Ranta, who they scouted really well. Because if you can get an undrafted guy to continue to – he's obviously not going to produce at the pace he produced when he came in in the playoffs and – uh, just lit it up, but produce at a good pace wherever you throw him as like a, what seems like he could be a jack of all trades, can play left and right wing, move up and down. <clears throat> um, and yeah. then you have Gorianov, who went from 20. He could be a guy you look to go from 20 to maybe a, up a couple goals and then mid 20s and there's, then like build. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 He does have the shot to get 30. It's just, will they set him up enough? Or, or, that, that's what I need to see first because um, Dallas, I need to see them be more consistent at offense where they're not the opportunist team. They're the team that's the opportunist team when they need to be, but also just outplay other teams, which is not fully what you saw yet. But I think it's smart to stay, Pat, like you said at the beginning with the question. I think it's smart to kind of keep because everything worked. And you want to, you don't want to put your cap in space signing one of the bigger forwards this year because after next year you got guys like Cogliano fall off as you have to sign guys like Heiskanen. So you're going to want to uh, be able to figure that out there. And then they also obviously brought in recently a guy that I know Steve and I like is a mix in defenseman and a guy that can also play wing. They did bring in Mark Pence. So. Mark Pitts. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I like him a lot. I, I think Florida's making a big mistake there. I don't know what happened with the, in Florida there, why they did not see the value in him, but I think they're making a big mistake. I really thought that was a great pickup. Uh, a few things I wanted to just mention, Joe, as you were going on there, though. Um, I still think um, this is the way this is the way I see Dallas. I think Dallas did get outplayed in the playoffs and happened to make it there under based on a few things. First of all, they're big bodies. Vegas did outpossess them, but wore down over time because they are because Dallas is that big. Dallas well, did play in their, in, their, their down, yeah. in their zones a lot, but while they were there, they beat them down pretty good. Yeah. So that was part of it. And I think they had a hard time at the end of this like by five game five and six, they had a hard time having the strength to get the shots on Hudobin that you need to get to score. And then in doing so, Hudobin began this confidence of feeling totally invincible. And uh, he, that just carried on all through. Uh, so um, it worked out really well, which shows everybody that, like, I'm a guy who does watch fancy stats. I pay attention to them quite a bit. But where Toronto made a big mistake is if you think size doesn't matter in the playoffs, you're insane because you can have poor fancy stats but still beat a team down and win, and Dallas showed that. And now as far as not changing their team, I think it's a huge benefit when you're going into a season where practices are going to be hard to come by. Now, I'm really kind of concerned about the Great Montreal. Great point. 
Yeah, I'm it's really going to be a condensed season, and yeah. you know, guys are not going to have the the practice times that the that they're nor- normally used to having. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and now I'm really concerned about time. Montreal Canadiens of the league and stuff that have did all these moves. And now this team has to gel, and they don't have the practice time that they're normally going to have to make adjustments as the season begins. Yeah. And a lot of people will say, well, they're going to have a preseason. They're going to have all That's that. Was, but, anybody will, say, what do you think about but anybody will tell you, any team, it's like players and coaches will tell you that the preseason and all that is only a precursor to the actual what happens in the regular season. If you if, if a team can't make adjustments during the regular season, they're usually screwed. doesn't matter how good their talent is. And, and uh, that is to be a thing for me. I'm a little concerned about Montreal, but not anywhere near as concerned with Dallas for keeping their team pretty much the same. And the only thing is, is Rick Bonus. I think Rick Bonus has been, I want you guys to ask about that, like risk, I'll just let you guys do it. Rick Bonus, what do you think about Rick Bonus and how what he did for this team? Uh, getting it looked like he was also struggling getting them to be in a scoring team rather than an always playing defensive team that has been built up in Dallas for years through Hitchcock and this stuff like that. Do you think Rick Bonus is able to get these guys focused more in the offensive zone the way he did somewhat in the playoffs? Uh, do you want to go with that, Steele, or do you want me to go? Yeah, go, go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. Um, I think he'll be able to slowly get it going because I think people felt it. I think you saw people bought in as the playoffs went on just from watching because, like I said, we saw Sagan had a big injury. Uh, he might not even be back. He's probably not going to be back, I don't think, as soon as I don't think for the start. season kicks off. Yeah. So really? uh, he was battling. he was battling through that. And um, he still played pretty good defense and played his best defensive side on the forecheck that I've seen in a while. So I think looking at that, he bought in. You could see a guy, an undrafted guy like Kivaranta, bought into bonus wanting to supply more offense of like a crash the net, uh, just get towards the slot by the net mentality because he scored a lot of his goals either in front of the net or right getting to a good place in the slot. So it seemed like people were starting to buy in more. You saw Pavelski really lighten it up as we saw shooting more and all that. We saw Ben in the conference finals really start uh, moving himself more on the offensive end and showing some signs of those plays where he gets him to himself to the front of the net by just using his big body. So I think we saw great progress with uh, Bonus, and I think we're going to continue to see that as time goes on, as they continue to build a better team for Rick Bonus with a little bit more solidification, too, because what I know is going to happen after this year when they lose some money is probably going to be re-signing Heiskanen and potentially getting another defenseman. Because you, you kind of have, like, your like four guys that you really like because they really like Sakara too. Then you got everyone else that mixes in. Steven Johns when he's healthy and bless him for being back from everything <laughs> um, is a good bottom six. But uh, you, the le- and then you have Alexiak. Those guys are similar righty lefties. So you might not want them on the same line. Neither of them's that fast. So like just some stuff to consider. Then you got Pissick. Are you playing them at wing? Are you playing them at D? So you have different things to consider uh, amongst them there. So I just think uh, he has a lot of stuff to play with. He seems good in that situation. I would say I agree with what Steele said at the forefront. Dallas is a team. The only caveat would be if Ben Bishop is having issues during next season. That should be favored to get back into the playoffs and do fairly well. I love Ottinger, but if Bishop's injured in a condensed season, I'm not putting all of my car to him in a kick. I think it's a chance to be a great goalie in the league getting thrown into a condensed season. It's an unknown it's an unknown world. So yeah. I'm not gonna say I hundred percent think Ottinger can get thrown into a condensed season and do great. I think he could do adequate, but we'll see if he'll do great in that situation because hopefully Bishop is not coming to his mid thirties where he starts having those bugaboo injuries that just seem to 
never fully go away, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. No, How about you, sense. Steel? What do you think about uh, that? I, I like what he's done. Um, and I think that, as you saw, uh, look, you, I think they got a little bit, you know, because they're bigger bodies, and I think they were chasing the game a little bit there, especially against Tampa Bay. Um, and when you get larger guys like that chasing the game, it, it wears you down much faster. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and they got outplayed because I think the Tampa Bay Lightning is a more complete team, and they were able to pretty much take it to Dallas, way more than Dallas was able to take it to them. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But I do like the system that he's put in, the coach. Um, I like the fact that he was able to come in there, and this says, this is going to speak right here to you, Perlo. The ownership of this team has kept everybody together for a reason. I mean, do you honestly think about it? If they re-signed everybody, kept almost the whole same team back, they honestly really believe in what this guy is doing. Okay? And that, to me, says a lot about the fact that they're trusting in this coach to get them uh-huh. to where they need to go. You know? They gave him extension I, and everything, though. No? Yeah. And, and I'm looking for Dallas to not just be contention for next year, I'm looking for them to do so in the future. I know after this coming year, it's going to be interesting, and their team is going to be much different after this coming year. But look, their window is now, so you got to embrace it while it's now. Oh, yeah, it's definitely now, for sure. Exactly. And because of what they did, and also the other point, too, that you have to take into consideration as well, this is going to be a condensed season. This is going to be... Um, major lack of availability for practice and major lack of availability for teams to get together. And I think that teams that did make a lot of moves like Montreal and some of the other teams that made a lot of different moves are going to be that first 10 or so games of the season are going to be, you know, not their best. And you're going to see, yeah, you're going to see teams that are going to need that, first 10 games to, to get everybody all on the same page. Yep. You know? And that and could be you, it. <laughs> and when you that don't have all that turnover yeah. with all those new teams coming in, or all those new players coming in, yeah, that just bodes well for your team, for your coach, and for everybody involved because everybody knows where everybody's been and you've been down that road before. I really yeah. like what this is, where this is going. I really look for Dallas to definitely be um, in major contention for this coming season, and if they're not, then I'll definitely be scratching my head. I don't think they're sleepers anymore. Well, um, yeah, yeah, you know, it's funny that you you mentioned the word sleepers for Dallas. There was no reason for it. And I think if you remember, before the playoffs started, I said, this is a huge waste of talent. And that was because of the system that had been put in place in Dallas for years that worked for Hitchcock back in the – well, yeah, whatever. Well, yeah. But he it was had a the players. Back then. He had the players, and it was a different game. Yeah, I'm it was a it. different game back then, and they have had a very difficult time of taking that philosophy out of their heads. And it seems that Rick Bonus has been the first coach that's been able to crack it a little bit. So, if they can, if they can improve now, if they made the finals the way they did. Imagine if they actually buy in by the end of the season. I mean, we could be looking at a Stanley Cup team here for sure. Easily. Uh, And and that's what I meant by that when I said this was a waste of talent. I wasn't really trying to be a jerk about it. There was a lot of talent here, but these guys are playing in a way that wasted their talent. And Bonus was doing a very good job, I think, of turning that around. But this has been awesome, guys. I think uh, one thing I was going to say, though, so I gave you the information about it since I brought it up. Sagan could miss up to four months with his hip surgery. Oh, he my. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what that tells me? That tells me that seat. Sagan's been playing with that hip injury for a long time. Yeah. And that explains a, a lot of the reason why he hasn't been putting up points the last two years. That also needs to uh, be addressed, though, because that would make me think, a guy like a Pissick might play more likely at forward to start the season. So guys you have that can play center or wing yeah. can play center. So you have somebody in second yeah. spot. 
And they're going to they have got to, a lot. Of flexible guys. They're going to have to sign yeah. Ropo Hints because Ropo That's, Hints. Yeah, is I was just going to say yeah, that makes signing play center. Yeah, that yeah. makes signing Hints that much more important for them because they're going to they're going to be missing um, Sagan for that amount of time. Though, the good news sure. is Ropo Hints looks like he's going to be a beast. By the way, Guriano was talked about for a very, very long time here. And Dallas has kept on with the kid. He's been a slow burn, but it looks like their patience has paid off. And to talk about the ownership, like you're saying, I would put this ownership up in the upper echelon of the league as, and you know what? I was just going to say the name of the person who owned it, and it just slipped out of my head at the moment. Oh, so no. that down in the comment section, remind me. I can't believe I forgot. Tom, Tom Gallardi. Gallardi, no, that's how you say it. Thank you. Gilardi. I don't think yeah. that was uh, – it could be it. Anyways, it doesn't matter. That's our full 42%, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed this Dallas talk to, uh, to, about the Dallas Stars. Uh, we're going to have um, – I guess what – Edmonton's got to be close here. Uh, I'll have to go on my – my Perlo chart and combine the alphabet with what I feel like and see what it comes up with. And we'll tell you all about it, but it's probably going to be Edmonton ish, Chicago ish. Should be coming here right away. Yeah, and what about Boston? Have you done Boston? What about Boston? Boston, Delhi, and I are going to be doing uh, uh, tomorrow, maybe, actually. Okay, so there you go. Yeah. So, and this is like Friday now, boys and girls, if you don't know already. Yeah. So. So tomorrow would be Saturday. So that'll be coming up right away, and it's all going to be much frolic, and we're all gonna we're gonna we're all gonna do a little frolic dance, because it's going to be so amazing. Talking about that, SteelFlyers.com. You want to talk about frolic? Absolutely amazing. It's gonna it's uh it's a great site already. Him and him and Steel Steel and his wife, beautiful wife, do uh, uh, some podcasts together where they talk about Formula One football, all the sports, which is what the Steel Flyers website is going to be. It's going to be an all sports radio broadcast and uh, uh, what you name you it. Call it. One stop yeah. shop. One stop shop for, for podcasts, all your sports. YouTubers, all your sports. Yep. everything you can think of, every sport, every team, all the time. It's going to be incredible. Yep. And you can find all of our stuff there. You can. Yeah, right? Man. Got it. So, yes. Have a, yeah, Joe. Joe with his uh, his all his writings and everything like that. Just go to Steel's Friends. You'll find us there. Boom, everything is there. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you.